G'day everyone, Disney Dave coming at you once again from Down Under. Welcome to the second part of my Disney movie collection videos. Of course, the last part I uploaded, I went through all of my animated titles in my Disney collection. Today I'm going through the live action titles. Now there's like quite a bit more live action titles in my collection than animated ones. So we're going to skim through most of them. We'll talk about one or two of them here, here along the way. I'd say there's probably more Blu-rays here than DVDs, but there's quite a few DVDs. I spoke last week about the animated titles where I only had the Blu-rays and there's a few gaps in my collection where I didn't pick the movie up on DVD because I've been waiting for the Blu-ray. The live action collection I'm a little bit different about. Over the last couple of years I've realised a lot of these older films from the 80s, the 90s probably aren't going to get a release on Blu-ray so I've uh, just gone out and I've pieced together a small collection on DVD. The only one I've actually been wrong about was Operation Dumbo Drop. For some reason out of all the titles Disney decided to release Operation Dumbo Drop as a Disney Movie Club exclusive. So this will be DVDs, it'll be Blu-rays, and uh, there's there's a bit of television stuff in here as well. One thing I should also say is I'm not going to be including the Marvel stuff and the Star Wars stuff. That's different. I know technically it's all Disney now. I just look at it as sort of a different thing. I still look at it as Disney, but I look at it outside of the, the Disney live action collection, I suppose. Maybe another day we'll do a video on that stuff. Now, this collection, as I said in the last video, is constantly growing. Every once in a while, three to six months there's a couple of titles coming out that I do add into the collection this is pretty much up to date at the moment I'm waiting on a couple of titles to arrive actually at the moment but we'll do an update video on that in uh, in a couple of weeks time so once again I'm gonna knock all these figures off the shelf and uh, we're going to get straight into it and take a look at all of these live-action films all right, so let's get straight back into this. It was a bit of a chore last week to go through all of the animated stuff. The live action stuff isn't gonna take as long. I'm just gonna quickly skim through it. Once again, pretty much everything is in chronological order unless there is a sequel to the film, then the sequel is placed next to the original film. So it's easy for me to keep the franchises together. I think I've also got the live action adaptations of animated movies in their own section. And I have another section for the sports movies and biopics. Of course, this isn't anywhere near 100% complete collection of the live action titles. It's nowhere near as complete as my animated collection. There are lots of holes in this collection and I'm really only picking up what I can here and there. It's ever growing, I'm updating it constantly. Okay, first up, Treasure Island. Now this is a Disney Movie Club exclusive. Any of the Yellow Border ones are Disney Movie Club exclusives. You can only buy them if you're a member of the Disney Movie Club. To be a member of the Disney Movie Club, you have to be an American resident. Luckily enough, I have a mate over in the US who's got a DMC account and whenever there's a new title released, he'll pick them up for me and send them over to me. I'll pay him for them, of course. So, Treasure Island. Davy Crockett, King of the Wild Frontier, and Davy Crockett and the River Pirates. Of course, these are the movie edits of the Davy Crockett TV serials. Old Yeller. This one's in a slipcover. The first batch of these they brought out in slipcovers then stopped releasing them in slipcovers. If you'd see my animated movie collection, I'm really OCD with the slipcovers. The movies, I'm not so much. Pollyanna, again, another in a slip. Swiss Family Robinson, no slip. I like that one, it was a good movie. Now these next ones are a whole lot of fun. Absent-minded Professor, Son of Flubber, and of course the remake, Flubber. For some reason I have it in a two movie collection with George of the Jungle. I never really, I don't know why, I didn't buy it by itself. But I have George of the Jungle by itself, weird. Babes in Toyland, it's a Christmas movie. I talk about it a little bit in my Christmas movie video, which I've just done recently, so check that out if you haven't. Mary Poppins, absolutely adore this movie. This is just incredible stuff. One of my favorite movies of all time. Saving Mr. Banks, okay, so this comes much, much, much later, but I've paired it up with uh, Mary Poppins. Of course, it's the story of how Walt Disney came to make the Mary Poppins movie. So it has its rightful place on the shelf next to the original film. These are a lot of fun too. The Love Bug, the original Herbie movie. Herbie Rides Again. Herbie Goes to Monte Carlo. Herbie Goes Bananas. And of course I've got, I don't know why, Herbie Fully Loaded, the one starring Lindsay Lohan. Now you'll notice there's actually quite a few DVDs in my collection. I've picked up DVDs of ones I really don't see getting Blu-ray releases. Blackbeard's Ghost. The computer wore tennis shoes. This is a bit of fun with a very young Kurt Russell. The boat nicks. Bed knobs and broomsticks. Of course, there's a bit of animation in this. Love this movie as a kid. It hasn't held up as much now that I've grown up a bit. The Apple Dumpling Gang. Escape to Witch Mountain. Return from Witch Mountain. And of course, Race to Witch Mountain, the sequel with The Rock. Eh, it was okay. Pete's Dragon. I've got the remake on the way uh, from Amazon right now, so I'll do an update video when that arrives with a couple other titles very soon. Tron, the original classic. Tron Legacy in 3D. 
Return to Oz. Now, funnily enough, I actually almost bought the DVD of this about a week before it was announced. So that's why I sort of hold my tongue a lot of the time and don't buy the DVDs. Now, a lot of these next ones are DVDs. They are all sort of late 80s, 90s movies that I really don't see getting a Blu-ray release. There's one in here which strangely did get a Blu-ray release and you'll, you'll see in a minute, I'll, I'll point that out. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, Honey, I Blew Up the Kids and Honey, We Shrunk Ourselves collection. Loved these movies as a kid. Haven't revisited them recently. I'm a little bit nervous because I have revisited some of these movies from this era and been a little bit disappointed. So I'm, I'm kind of thinking about leaving this one in the nostalgia realm for a little while. The Rocketeer, originally actually released under the Touchstone label, I think. But I think to try and sell the Blu-ray, they've whacked the Disney label on it to enable to get more people to buy it. Champions, which was originally released in Australia as The Mighty Ducks. The Mighty Ducks, which was originally released in Australia as The Mighty Ducks 2. And D3, The Mighty Ducks. Cool runnings, man. Great film. John Candy on form. I think this was actually John Candy's last film. Or one of his last films. Great movie. Sanka, you're dead yet? Yeah, man. The Santa Claus 1, 2, and 3. I love the first movie. Second movie is okay. Third movie, absolute trash. Strangely enough, they're all region free apart from the third movie. Thank God. One reason not to watch it. More on that in my Christmas video if you go check it out. Hocus Pocus. I've never actually watched this. I really don't think I'll be into this, but it's there for completest sake. Man of the House. Loved this as a kid. Once again, one that I'm, I've got a little bit of trepidation in revisiting. Had to import this one from the UK. Operation Dumbo Drop came out on Blu-ray from the Disney Movie Club. Don't know why. I actually bought this one on DVD and then it came out on Blu-ray. I don't know why. That's a very strange release. When they've released mostly all of these old classic movies and then they just drop Operation Dumbo Drop. Very strange, but nice to have on Blu-ray. I, I do hope that that is a sign of, of hopefully some of these other 80s, 90s flicks coming out on, on Blu-ray. I'll Be Home for Christmas. Love this movie. More on it in my Christmas video. 101 Dalmatians and 102 Dalmatians. Really the first two animation to live action adaptations. They're actually going back and remaking it, I think, as Cruella with Emma Stone. I haven't put these with my animation to live action titles simply for that reason. And it, it, I don't know why, just because I haven't. George of the Jungle. This is one I loved as a kid, then rewatched and just didn't like. Jungle to Jungle. This is awesome. Love this movie. I revisited this one lately and I, I, I did like it. I'll have to rewatch it again soon because it's great. Mighty Joe Young. I really like this. Who was in it? Bill Paxton, Charlize Theron. Really good movie. It gave me nightmares as a kid, but it's really touching, really beautiful. The Parent Trap starring Lindsay Lohan and Lindsay Lohan. This was her first movie, actually. I'd really like to see the Disney Movie Club release the original film, but uh, they haven't yet. But I've got that one sitting there in the collection, just ready for it. I loved that as a kid. Talking about the kid. The kid! Oh man, this movie is so cool. This is such an underrated, unknown movie. I love this movie so much. This was my introduction to Bruce Willis, and I've been a lifelong fan. This is a cool movie. You have to check this one out. I've got The Princess Diaries and The Princess Diaries 2, Royal Engagement. Never really cared for these, but again, it's there for completest sake. The Country Bears. Don't know why I bought this one, to be honest. But there it is. Freaky Friday. Love this as a kid, but I imagine I wouldn't love it now. Another Lindsay Lohan flick. Yeah, I don't think I'll be re revisiting that. The Haunted Mansion. Ah, ah, ah. Um, yeah, it's okay. Again, they're remaking this one. Not great, but it was all right. I just remember seeing it as a kid and being disappointed because the best part of the trailer didn't even make the movie. Eddie Murphy looks at something and goes, Hey, that's cool. What is that? And they cut it out of the movie. I, I laughed so much seeing that in the trailer and they cut it out. What? That's neat. What is that? I am Madame Leota, seer of all. Oh, that's great. What is that? They cut it out. Annoying. Holes! I think I watched this in high school. They played it for us. It was okay. Worthy enough for the collection. The Pacifier. This is when Disney live action sort of started taking a decline. Not great. Once again, in the collection for completest sake. National Treasure 1 and 2. Imported this one from the UK because of the slip. But yeah, I actually really like these. I'm not a huge fan of anything Nick Cage has done after 1999. But these movies are actually really cool. I had a lot of fun with these. I think at this point the chronological orders add a little bit only because I can't fit DVDs on this shelf. But I can on that shelf, so it just it, it's ch changed the structure of how I've had to have stuff in there. Pirates of the Caribbean. Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest. Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End. And of course, 
Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides in 3D. I actually love on Stranger Tides. I mean, a lot of people didn't like it. Uh, to be honest, I didn't like it when I first saw it in theaters, but it's grown on me over the years. In fact, I love all of them, really. I love all of the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. They're just so much fun, so much fun. If you'd seen my animation one, you would have seen that I have many Australian discs that I had to buy American slipcovers for. The Australian discs are a bit thicker than the American discs, so the slipcovers are a bit hard to get on and off. The animated ones have been fine, but for some reason the Pirates of the Caribbean ones all sort of just didn't want to sit on the discs very well. So I really need to figure out a way of taping them together, I think. But I just really wanted slipcovers for these. Chronicles of Narnia, Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, haven't watched it. Chronicles of Narnia, Prince Caspian, haven't watched that. Now, I don't have the third one because the third one wasn't Disney. Sky High, yeah, haven't watched that either, don't think I will be. Eight Below, I think I watched this as a kid. Yeah, I don't think I'll be revisiting that either. Enchanted, actually really love Enchanted, that's a lot of fun. Really good, it's got a bit of animation in it and yeah, a lot of fun, I like that one. Bridge to Terabithia, I haven't watched this one either. I really don't like the whole motion capture thing. It creeps me out. So yeah, I haven't I haven't gone for that one yet. Bedtime Stories. I love this. An, a, a random, rare, slip-covered Blu-ray release from uh, Disney in Australia. Really love this. I mean, I'm an Adam Sandler fan. I haven't enjoyed any movie he's made for the last 10 years probably, but this is really good. I really like this. The Game Plan with The Rock, another... Actually, this is a good one. I really like this one. This is the one's actually really good fun. Underdog, terrible. Why did I buy it? Why? G-Force, also terrible. I sat through this whole movie, don't know why. Just, just plain, just terrible. Old Dogs, terrible, terribly fun. This is one's actually all right. I can't knock a Robin Williams film. I love Robin Williams so much and I have a bit of a soft spot for this movie because it is, it is a little bit of lighthearted fun. Prince of Persia. Yeah, I was looking forward to seeing that, actually, even after I'd heard that it was pretty average. I enjoyed it, but it wasn't great. Certainly no Pirates of the Caribbean. Same with Sorcerer's Apprentice. Really, really looking forward to this, and it was just, just a complete letdown. This is based on a sequence from Fantasia, animated to live action adaptations, but... Uh, but I'm not going to put it in the same category as, say, Maleficent. John Carter, 3D, another one that I was really, really hoping was going to be great and was just a pile of steaming, you know what. But The Lone Ranger, I absolutely loved. This is one everyone hated, I loved this. This is just so much fun. This has got some of the best action sequences I've seen in a movie for many, many years. It's just a lot of just brainless fun. Really get into this movie if you haven't seen it. I guarantee you'll enjoy that. Into the Woods, still haven't braved myself to see this. I'm not a huge fan of the Broadway musical thing. I'm not a real big Meryl Streep fan. Yeah, it's a little bit of a hard one to get into for me. So one day, one day. Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day. Really enjoyed that. That was a lot of fun. Of course, Steve Crowell movies always are. And the kid's Australian. Kid's an Aussie. Tomorrowland. This is a movie... I wanted to love so much, and look, I do love, but they just completely screwed it over. They removed a lot of scenes that would have made this movie make a lot more sense, would have made this movie a lot more important. Originally, this movie was sort of based around Walt Disney and his ideologies for a better future, sort of all his ideas that he threw into the Tomorrowland concept and the Epcot concept before he died. Originally, Walt Disney was mentioned in the film, and Walt Disney was the original founder of Tomorrowland. Had they left all that in, it would would have made this movie more important a lot more people would have understood this movie but i think they didn't want to be too on the nose and in the end they they removed all that stuff it just to the detriment of the movie really i really love it because i know what it's all about i know the story behind it i've seen the deleted scenes but a lot of people went in and they they didn't get it and they didn't like it so i love it for that reason but as a movie yeah it it, it failed to reach the status it really could have this is a very important movie very important movie and they just sort of yeah, they ruined it a little bit. Oz, the great and powerful. Is it in 3D? Oh, it's like stuck in there. This is a case of me buying the 3D edition in Australia and buying the 2D slipcover from America because I like the 2D slipcover better than the 3D one, really. Alice in Wonderland 3D, not a huge fan. Alice Through the Looking Glass 3D. This one I imported from the UK. Yeah, there was no 3D version available in the States, so I had to import that one from the UK instead. Maleficent in 2D from the States. Again, they didn't release it in 3D in the States, so I bought the 3D in Australia. In hindsight, I wish I'd bought the 3D 
from uh, the UK to get the slipcover. Cinderella, uh, they didn't do a 3D version of this. I think Kenneth Branagh was very adamant that they didn't do a 3D release of this. I absolutely love this. And I love Maleficent too. I love both of these. Absolutely stunning movies. They look beautiful. They are beautiful. And I couldn't recommend them enough. I know a lot of people didn't like them. I picked this up in Australia as well, I think, because I was impatient. I really wanted to see it again. And the US release wasn't coming out for a couple of months. Actually, I was going overseas for three months and I picked this one up before I went over to watch it. And then when I got back from the from overseas, I, I picked this one up. And of course, the Jungle Book in 3D. Import from the UK, again, because the US didn't get a 3D release. About three weeks after I bought this one, the US announced their 3D release. So I've got that one coming from Amazon and I might sell this one off. I haven't decided yet. I might keep them both because I like the cover art for this and the cover art on the US 3D is different. Now we move on to some other little different things. Next, we've got some TV stuff. Once Upon a Time, season one with the lenticular slip cover. I was lucky to get that because that went out of production pretty quickly, the lenticular slip. Season two in the lenticular slip. Season three in the lenticular slip. Woo! Season four, by this time, they'd stopped doing the lenticular slips. These are all the American ones. The Australian ones don't come with slip covers, of course. And I've just recently imported the fifth season as well. I've only watched the first two and a half seasons, so I've got to get back into that one. And now this is where some of the sports and biopic ones I was talking about. Remember the Titans, really good movie. The Rookie, really good movie. Miracle, haven't watched that one yet, but it looks really good. The Greatest Game Ever Played, again, haven't watched that one. Miracle, this one, and the next two are recent imports. So I haven't watched them yet. Greatest Game, looks really good. Glory Road, not too sure what to think about this one, but I thought I'll grab it since I have the other ones. Invincible, again, this one I've wanted to watch for years and years, so I'll watch this one very soon. Secretariat, I haven't watched this one either. Equine movies, movies about horses, horse racing, I can't really get into that much. Million Dollar Arm, cannot recommend this enough. This film is absolutely awesome. McFarlane USA, that is uh, quite good as well. I really enjoyed that one too. And Finest Hours, I haven't watched this one yet. This is the latest one that I've included in this set here. Uh, but I'm really looking forward to that. It looks really good. And now we go on to the Muppet stuff. The Muppet movie. The Muppets Take Manhattan. That's actually not a Disney release, but I've put it with all my Disney Muppet releases. Muppet Treasure Island. Great Muppet Caper. That's a Disney release. Muppets from Space. Not a Disney release. The Muppet Christmas Carol. More on that in the Christmas video. The very Muppet Christmas movie. Not a Disney release. Don't know why I bought it. The Muppets. Absolutely love this. So, so good. And The Muppets Most Wanted. It was okay. I love Ricky Gervais, so this is kind of a worthy movie. They just did a Muppet series on ABC in the States. Really wish they'd released that on Blu-ray as well, or even DVD. I don't think they will because I've just axed the show. They haven't renewed it for a second season. All right, now we come to what's a really, really niche part of my collection. Back in the 80s, Michael Eisner and Jeffrey Katzenberg, who were running Disney at the time, wanted to, for the very first time in the company's history, start making movies that were a little bit more adult-oriented. Now, it was a big thing. It was a bit controversial at the time because Disney was always family-friendly. It was always kids' movies, family movies, and they'd never really made anything that was over a PG-13. Now, Michael Eisner had had come from a background of working at big Hollywood studios and knew how to make big blockbuster movies and he wanted to bring that expertise to Disney. So their idea was instead of releasing them as Disney movies they will release them under a different banner and they decided on the name Touchstone Entertainment. Now Touchstone Entertainment isn't a separate company from Disney, it is Disney. Touchstone is just a banner that they would put on these Disney produced movies without scaring away an audience. Well one, they wanted to distance them from the family friendly movies so a kid didn't look on the shelf and go, oh I want to see Disney's Armageddon. Or conversely they thought slapping the name Disney on a movie like Armageddon would scare away an adult crowd. So they started releasing these movies under the Touchstone banner. Since Pirates of the Caribbean, which was the first PG-13 movie to be released with the Disney name, the company has been a little bit more open at releasing more adult movies under the Disney banner, as you've seen with some of the movies that I just went through then. But there was this big period there in the 80s, 90s. There were a few trickling into the 2000s there as well that were all released under Touchstone. Now these were all Disney movies, they just don't have the Disney banner on them. Touchstone is still running, but they are only 
I think Disney struck like a 10 year deal with DreamWorks to distribute DreamWorks films within the United States under the Touchstone banner. So let's take a look at some of these. Some of these will actually surprise you that they are Disney movies, but trust me, these are all Disney movies. A lot of these are Jerry Bruckheimer, like action adventure movies. Disney struck a deal with him, multi-picture deal, to come in and make big blockbusters for them. So let's take a look. This was the very first one to be released from Touchstone, Splash starring Tom Hanks and Daryl Hannah. Funnily enough, the ride Splash Mountain at Disneyland is named after Splash. Even though the ride is based on the movie Song of the South, they were originally going to call it like Zippity Doodah Springs or Zippity Doodah something or other, but Michael Eisner had the smart idea, let's call it Splash and capitalise on the film that was just going to be released in cinemas. The Colour of Money, this is a Martin Scorsese film and is a sequel to uh, the old Paul Newman movie The Hustler. Really, really good. Adventures in Babysitting, this is one they could have quite easily put under the Disney banner but as you can see it's a little bit of a higher rating so I don't think they wanted to risk that. Good morning Vietnam! Yep, that's a Disney movie. Check that out. Robin Williams did actually quite a few movies for them. Roger Rabbit, yes! Disney did all the animation in this, despite, I think, Amblin Entertainment sort of put this movie together because this was a Spielberg, Robert Zemeckis film, but they had uh, Disney do all the animation, so they released it under the Touchstone banner. I actually forgot to mention this one in my animated video because I did pull out a couple of the ones that had animation live action. So there's another one. Cocktail, another Tom Cruise movie, co-starring Ozzy Brian Brown. Dead Poets Society, another Robin Williams flick. Turner and Hooch, very cool. I love that so much. Pretty Woman. Yep, that's a Disney movie right there. Dick Tracy, yeah, not great. Father of the Bride and Father of the Bride Part 2. These ones could have been released under the Disney banner, I'm sure. I'm not sure why they didn't. I haven't read into that. Maybe there is a reason they didn't release that. But they are beautiful movies and I love them so, so, so much. So funny, so charming, so heartwarming. These are gorgeous films. I really wish they were released under the Disney banner. What's love got to do, got to do with it? Yeah, this is the uh, life story of Tina Turner. Haven't watched it yet, but it's supposed to be really, really good. I'll probably watch that soon. These next two, A Simple Twist of Fate and Unstrung Heroes. Uh, I really love it. I bought it for A Simple Twist of Fate. What, what are they called? Mill Creek Entertainment. This is a United States distributor. They've been releasing a lot of the old Touchstone movies that Disney don't want to release. For one reason or another, I think all the ones that are really unknown. They released quite a ton of these packs. This is the only one I bought though. Wasn't really too interested in any of the other ones. Ed Wood. Yeah, this is Johnny Depp being Johnny Depp, but it's a nice film. It's all right. I enjoyed it the one time I watched it. I'll probably watch it again. Phenomenon. Love this movie so much. John Travolta at his peak. Really, really charming film. Ransom. This is where we get into Jerry Bruckheimer movies and a few movies where you go, wow, didn't realise that was Disney. Con Air. Face Off. Air Force One. The Horse Whisperer. If this was released today, Disney banner would have been all over that. Armageddon, as I mentioned before. The Water Boy. Random. Enemy of the State. 10 Things I Hate About You. It's a uh, adaptation of Shakespeare's The Taming of the Shrew. 10 Things I Hate About You, The Taming of the Shrew. Wow. The Insider, High Fidelity. Could not recommend this movie enough. It is amazing. I love John Cusack, highly underrated actor. Keeping the Faith, another really good film. Shanghai Noon and Shanghai Nights. They could have put the Disney banner on these, I reckon. Again, if they did release these today, they would have put the Disney banner on it. They're releasing a third one actually, but Disney's not doing it. They've taken it somewhere else. Gone in 60 seconds. Yeah, I always forget that's Disney, but it is. Coyote Ugly. Yeah, lucky they didn't put the Disney banner on that one. Unbreakable. Pearl Harbor. Not quite a good movie. This was the end of the relationship with Michael Bay and the studio. The studio predicted this movie would make absolute bucket loads and it tanked. It was terrible. Signs. Really love this movie. Sweet home Alabama. I like this one. It's quite charming. Under the Tuscan Sun. Didn't watch this one. My mum read the book. She loved the book and then watched the movie and hated it. So yeah, I probably won't watch it. King Arthur. Yeah, Disney. Oh, look at it right now. I'm surprised. Yeah, didn't like that one as much as I thought I would. Ladder 49. Deja Vu, good movie, saw that at the cinemas. That's a good movie too, Ladder 49. Saw them both at the cinemas. Wild Hogs, bit of fun. Confessions of a Shopaholic. The Proposal, that's great. I actually really like that. And really one of the last ones Disney released under Touchstone, Winning Rome. Didn't watch this one myself either. 
Well, that brings us to the end of my live action collection. I hope you enjoyed it. Of course, if you haven't yet, check out the first video that I did, which is my animated collection. A little bit longer, but I go through my entire animated collection. As you can see behind me, there's quite a bit there. So check that out if you haven't. Look, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you're not a subscriber yet, and you're a big fan of Disney, Pixar, Marvel, and Star Wars, well, this is the place for you. So hit subscribe after the jump, and I hope I will see you in the future. But until then, everyone, take care, and I hope you have a magical day. Thank you.